guys, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make some Easter egg mug rugs. We're going to talk about making a scrappy version. I'm going to show you how to do quilt as you go. And then these two are, some call them a panel piece of fabric and other one calls them border fabrics or lines. Whatever you want to call them. I just had some of this fun Easter fabric that I thought would be great for some mug rugs. And then I've got some eggs on the back of these, but I want to show you the process of how to make them, how to quilt as you go. I'm going to show you two different techniques to make them where you just put the two pieces of fabric and you flip them and sew around. Something for a little bit easier for the beginners and then something for those of you that are more experienced. And I know many of you are going to see this project and just jump off from it and make all kinds of fun things. Let's get started. I've recently shown some of the Easter and spring bunting that I was making where I made some carrots and some eggs and some bunnies, obviously. And since I had some of that leftover fabric, I went ahead and laid down my egg. This time I chose instead of putting the fabric this way like I did for the bunting, I chose to lay it down this way. I just went ahead and traced out my egg cut it out and then I put it all together. And I did this in the same way that I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now to get these fabric panels, I just took a whole bunch of one and a half or you can even use two inch strips of scrap fabrics and I just sewed them all together to make a solid panel of one color fabric. But today, I wanna to show you a quick and simple quilt as you go method. To make these panels, it did take me quite a bit of time to make each color. It wouldn't take very long to just to do one. But as I mentioned, you can just figure out what size your egg is. Now my egg is a little over nine inches tall and a little over seven inches wide. I'm gonna put a link down below to where I found these egg patterns, but you can easily just Google coloring book patterns for Easter eggs and things like that, or egg outlines for decorations and stuff. There's always just different ways you can phrase it on Google. For, for the most point, if you just look for coloring books and what you want, you can easily find it. Now this plastic, I cut out of one of those clear cutting boards that I like to pick up at the Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack for a dollar. So it's really great to pick it out. And I like this because when I show you how to make this one here and this one's made just out of one piece of fabric you can easily see through to line it up and to decide which of the fabrics that you want to highlight in the show so on my panel i could have placed it anywhere i wanted but i just thought this one was going to be really nice and had just a little bit of a highlight of the lighter colors and i did like it going this way because like i said the next one we're going to do and we're going to do a quilt as you go and we're going to do it more of the horizontal so i thought the vertical way would be fun to just change it up a bit so what I have here is I have a piece of cotton batting, which is what I like to use. You can use any type of batting you like. Wool batting will work, polyester. If you don't have actual batting, you can use maybe some flannel if you happen to have flannel around, or if you have an old flannel t-shirt from maybe one that's got holes in it or one of the kids have outgrown. You could use a thin, it's like a sweatshirt material from old pair of sweatpants or a hoodie that's, again, it's got holes or stains in it. You just want something that's not too bulky because if you're gonna use this as an actual mug rug and you wanna put a mug on it, then you wanna have something that's not so thick that it's going to possibly cause your mug to be uneven and you don't wanna spill anything. But if you're just gonna use it as a decoration and just lay it out on a table or on a nice white table runner, you can see how the colors would pop against the white, then it really doesn't matter what you put on the inside because if it's just a decoration, the thickness isn't going to matter. You could simply just use two pieces of fabric, the front and the back, and that would be fine also. But I like to use my cotton batting, so I have my cotton batting, and I just have some bits left over from a jelly roll. So I just laid out some of my scraps and I decided just a little bit of what colors I wanted to use and maybe the placement of them based on the size of my scraps. Now my pink, I trimmed these down to use for the right length of them, but my pink was the only scrap I have left over. This is actually cut from a piece of leftover binding that I had. So I wanted to put that up at the narrow part at the top of the egg. 
So that way I didn't have to use as much. I kept my wider strips in the center and then I have my yellow at the bottom just so that I know I have enough. Once I do a little bit, since we're only doing a quilt as we go and we're not like super densely quilting it, it won't shrivel up that much. So it should be perfectly fine at the width it is. If you want to make it so that it's maybe an inch more all the way around, Cut your batting just a little bit larger and make sure your fabric is a little bit larger. Then that'll give you any type of extra room so you won't have to go through the process only to realize that your everything is shrunk down. And if it did, if your project after you quilted it shrunk in and it was smaller than your actual egg template, just go ahead and make a smaller egg. Not all eggs come out of a chicken the same size. Plus there's duck eggs and goose eggs and there's bird eggs. So you could technically use any size of an egg you wanted and have a mishmash and it would be fine. But if you want them all to be the same size, just make sure whatever you're cutting out for your batting, your backing, and your scraps is going to be a little bit larger than your finished egg needs to be. Now, since our eggs aren't going to have any binding, we're just going to do the pillowcase or envelope where you flip it all out and just stitch all the way around it. I'm only going to be quilting through my top of my egg and my batting. But if you'd like, you could put a piece of scrap fabric on the back that won't be seen. It would be actually inside your egg. I know some people don't like to sew directly onto batting and have that go, because sometimes it gets the fuzzies into your machine. It may not slide as easily. So if you're starting to find a little bit of a struggle, you can always go ahead and put a piece of, just an old piece of fabric, something that's not gonna shine through. So if I have this white fabric with the bunnies on the back, I wouldn't want to use a piece of dark fabric, a red or a blue or anything. If I wanted to put something on the back here, I would want to use some type of a white fabric. Also, if you're using leftover batting that's maybe black or something, keep that in mind on your backing fabric. You might want to go with something that's more solid that that black won't shine through. So I have my basic layout. You can start anywhere you want and work your way top to bottom, bottom to top, but I like to work just from the center and work my way out. That way it kind of gives me an idea so that I know I'm staying in the center of my egg. If I started all the way up here, well, maybe I didn't have enough or anything like that. And if as I'm sewing this, you see when I laid this out, I have it overlapping a little bit. So if I run out of fabrics before I get to the bottom of my egg. As you see, I do have a lot of space here extra, so that should help me out with my quarter inch seam allowance, but maybe keep an extra piece of fabric for the bottom in case you, you know, if you run out of fabric and you, you've, the way you've sewn it together and you didn't allow enough, you might need to add an extra piece, but I have them laid over, like this one's laid over a good half of an inch as this one is also overlapped a half of an inch. So I feel confident that I'm gonna be okay. So I'm gonna leave my brown fabric here. If you want, you could put a couple pins in the first piece of fabric so you know it stays in place. But with the cotton batting, it just seems to cling onto it. I'm just gonna take these and slide them over and I'm gonna keep them in order so I know which way I had originally thought. I already know I wanted a blue on either side of the brown just to balance out the fact that I have two blues. I'm putting the darker blue on the bottom because I kind of feel like darker colors will weigh it down and it tends to be, like if you look out at the sky, you've got your, your land, your brown or your green grass or whatnot, and it lightens up as it goes up to the sky. So I wanna give the same feeling to my egg. And that's just total personal preference. You can lay it out any way you want. And as I said, I'm doing the horizontal. You can do the vertical also, and it would be the same way. You would just need to have longer strips of fabric. My scraps weren't long enough for me to go from the top of the egg to the bottom. As I mentioned, I just had this narrow pink one, but I really like this pink for Easter, so I wanted to make sure I included it. So as I'm starting, as I said, I left my brown in place and I'm gonna lay my blue right sides together. And since the blue is on the bottom of the brown below it, I'm going to make sure I'm stitching on the bottom of the brown and not here at the top. Because if I stitched here, it would go up that way. So I wanna make sure I stitch there and go down this way. Now I'm gonna stick with my quarter of an inch. It's plenty of stitching for this project. I have my needle, as I said, it's quarter of an inch off the side of my foot. It's at the 2.0 stitch length. I like to have it a nice little tight stitch. Since we are going through batting, I can increase it a little bit. 
So a lot of times when I'm quilting, I will bump it up to 2.8. So we can go ahead and bump it up a little bit. The stitches have to go through two pieces of fabric and it has to go through the batting. So you don't want a super tight stitch. It could draw the stitches in and give you some a weird puckery look to it where your stitches are sunken into the batting. So you might need to lengthen your stitch length just a little bit, but not too much because we want to make sure that it stays sewn together. This could, if we're using it as a mug rug, chances are it's going to need to go through the washer and dryer. And if it just has a table topper, we might want to give it a light cleaning with a nice damp cloth before the new season, or if it's dusty or we have to press it. So we want it to be able to stay together. So I wouldn't go too long of a stitch length. I've got lined up. I am just at the edge of my batting here and I know my egg is going to be narrower than this. I just want to make sure my stitching starts on the outside of my egg. Just line it all up and I stitch. Now this first brown piece and the blue one that I put down is going to determine the look of my egg. If I had to put this down in any type of a crooked angle, then I would have them sewn onto my egg. When you open this up, it would have ended up being like on a diagonal for my egg. And that's fine too if that's the look you want. But if you want everything to be nice and straight and lined up, make sure your first two pieces are put down nicely. Trim out any loose threads that might be in your way. Now, if I were making a larger project, I would take this over to my iron and I'd give it a nice press, but you can just run your finger along it. I have this little wooden iron that I can just go ahead and press it. I just want it to lay down. Now that little bit, it's gone all the way through. So now I have actually quilted my egg. If you wanted it to be a little bit more and you wanted to actually see the quilting, you can go ahead and put a little top stitch down here. Or you can even still add more quilting to your egg after it's done. But I like the clean look of it and I think just having that will be fine. This one I don't want to have quilted. I can quilt my other ones. So now I have my next one is yellow. So I want to make sure that I know this is the yellow that I'm going to go. So I want to put them right sides together on top of that blue fabric. I'm lining up my raw edges here and if they're not straight you can always trim them straight with a ruler but mine came off of a jelly roll so it's basically straight again I'm just going to sew the quarter inch I'm still sticking with my 2.8 I'm not going to change that and there's that bottom half of my egg again press it with your fingers Go ahead and use a wooden iron. Take it over to your iron. If you want to make sure everything lays nice and flat, you can give it a good press. I'm going to trim these brown threads that are just hanging loose because they will show underneath my next fabric and I don't want them peeking out anywhere. My next fabric is this light bluish green. Now my fabric has a little bit of a stain down here, so I'm just gonna make sure that that stays off to the edge. I can always test with my egg just to make sure that that little bit of a stain is off so I don't have to worry about it. I'll keep that over to the edge. This fabric tends to fray a little. Again, put them right sides together. And this time I'm gonna spin it around because I wanna sew at the top of my brown. If you haven't mastered the quarter inch seam or you're not a quilter, so that's not something that you're used to doing, it doesn't really matter what your seam allowance is here. It's the best option to have it at least a quarter of an inch wide. You can always go more, three eighths or half an inch if you wanted. You just need to make sure you have enough fabric if you use a wider seam to cover your entire project, which is the egg. Go ahead, just give it a nice little press. I'm going to put my egg down back here. And as I can see, I only have this little bit left. So I know that my pink should be able to cover it easily. If I pretend of my quarter inch and just kind of go like that, I can lay it down and I can see that I have plenty of space down here. I can just have a little bit of pink and a bunch of yellow or after I sew it, I'll be able to adjust it. 
But what my concern is, is I want to make sure that I one stay, I've got my brown stain here all the way to the edge, so I'm okay. And I want to make sure my egg stays on my batting. So when I lay the pink fabric down, I can slide it down a little bit just to ensure that it's going to cover the top of the egg where I need it to as I slide it up and down. And so it again. There we go, there's our pink. Double check before we leave the sewing machine, I have plenty of color of my fabric all the way around my egg. I can adjust it up and down depending on how much pink I want and how much yellow I want. I'm gonna give it a little nice press, so I'm gonna put this old hand towel down underneath my wool mat, just so it absorbs a little bit of the steam and moisture. For when I go ahead and give this a nice little press, Remember, we have it stitched all the way through our batting. I just want to make sure everything is nice and flat and we're all set to go. Sometimes when you're doing it and you're doing it by hand and you don't take it to your iron at every step, sometimes you will get a little bit of a, an extra bit of fabric that kind of rolls over onto the seam. So if you went like this, you could actually pick it up. But if you give it a nice little press, and if you find you have that little bit of fabric like that, you could take it and do a little top stitching down across here. Let me just go ahead and show you what that looks like so that if you do want to do the top stitching, you'll see how easy it is to do. I'm going to leave it. I still have the blue thread in here. That's fine. I'm going to leave it at the 2.8 on my stitch length. And then I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch away from either seam. Now you can do it on both sides or just one. I think I'm gonna work my way from top to bottom and I'm going to put my stitching on the top of the seam. But as I said, you can do it in both places. I'll just line it up on my presser foot where I know about an eighth of an inch is. I have three markings for needle positions, left, center, and right. So I just like to put that little right side right along the edge of my foot so that I'm gonna stitch there. You could do a quarter inch. You could do anything in between. It doesn't have to be exact. Just whatever you do on this one, just follow it through and do it on all the rest. If you sew at the top of the seam, then sew at the top of the seam all the way down, unless it doesn't matter. It's not like anyone's really gonna look at it and go, oh, ooh, Robin, you're not perfect. You have one here and the rest of them are on the other side. People aren't gonna notice, but if it bothers you, then you wanna make sure you pay attention. That's it, as easy as that to just stitch along there. Let me go ahead and stitch the rest of these and then we'll put it up in front of the camera so you can see it nice and easy. But top stitching like this is just a really simple technique and a lot of times it just makes your project go from, oh, that was nice, to, oh, look, that's fancy. And people don't always realize when they're looking at your project, they don't know that this is different from it, what it was. They just see the extra little bit of stitching. Like when you buy a nice leather purse, when you buy your shoes or your clothes, you can see an extra stitching line. So their mind just automatically goes to, this is fancy and this is how it's supposed to be. So it just becomes a great way to add a little bit of extra pizzazz to it. You can also do some fancy stitches. Now my sewing machine has a bunch of them. I know it has some hearts, but I don't think it has any Easter eggs. So if you wanted to do something different to some of them, you can do words and they have all different things to stitch out. So it's totally up to you. Now this one's, I have the fold here to go up against. Now these, since all our seam allowance is going that way, I just have to line it up with the top of the fabric and just keep a little bit of eye onto it. But actually, since it's going different, I'm gonna be crazy and I'm gonna keep stitching it on here just because I like to stitch it where the seam allowance is versus just stitching along the edge. This way it looks like I have a purpose for putting it there, like I'm holding it down with some extra strength, which really is just decoration. Would a project like this, does it matter? No, not at all, but it's a good way for you to practice a technique and then you can apply this to other projects where it might be a little bit important. Let's get a closer look at this. 
So there is those extra lines of top stitching. It just adds a little bit to it. And you can see when you look at it anyways, if you know what you're looking at and your eyes kind of get used to it, you can see that this brown fabric is down below because you can, you can really see with your eye this little edge here. Now, if you're just picking this up at the store and you're just buying it to put on a decoration, you might not see these things and think about them. But the more you start sewing and the more you start making your own items, you'll start noticing these things and you'll know what your preferences are and what your eye, what appeals to your eye and what you enjoy. And if none of it matters to you, then, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do it. But I do like a little bit of the stitching and I wanted to make sure... Yes, I said I was going to leave it plain, but then I thought, well, what if one of you guys is new to this and you haven't done it before? It's a good idea to go ahead and show it to you so that if you do choose it, now you can see what mine looks like and you can say, oh, well, it doesn't matter to me. It's fine either way. Then you can make that decision. Now I'm going to trace my egg and I'm going to use a friction pen. It really doesn't matter what you're going to use. I try to avoid a Sharpie, but if you have like a fine tipped one, it would be okay. A ballpoint pen, mechanical pencil, or any of the specific ones that pencils and pens that are used for sewing the wipe away, wash away, heat away, and all of those. This one will go away with heat. Now I know some people will say, but Robin, it can show up again in the cold. It's going to be along the edge and I'm going to cut on it. So most of it's going to go away and it's also going to be in the seam allowance. So it's not going to matter. But in case while I'm doing this, if my hand slips and it moves or anything like that, then I can always hit it with the heat and start all over again. When we sew this together, we're going to be putting our backing fabric on top. We're going to stitch around and we're going to turn it right side out. So we are going to lose a little bit of a seam allowance. you got to figure in at least a quarter of an inch. And if you choose to sew it with a wider one, maybe a three-eighths or half an inch, you want to account for that. Because if I bring it all the way down here, I'm going to lose most of that pink into my seam allowance. So we went through the effort of using it. We like that bright shot of pink. I like the nice bright colors on the top and bottom. I guess I, I had at one point thought about putting the yellow on top because it's brighter and the pink was darker. But again, because the top of the egg is narrower, it kind of limited my options. So I'm going to try to split the difference, keep it in mind where my batting is on the sides. Just make sure I have a little bit of each color. Then I'll trace around it. And I'm going to cut out right on my line. I have another technique when we do the one where we're just going to use the solid fabric. And that will be an easier one if you guys are just a beginner. And it's a little bit harder sometimes to sew along an edge like this to get a nice seam. But if we're going to show you the other one where you can just sew right on the line and it'll make it a lot easier. So I'm going to do my best just to cut right along on this line. I don't have any stitches down here, so if you wanted to, you could put a couple pins in just to hold it in place. But again, the cotton batting and a wool batting will just grab onto the cotton fabric and hold it nicely. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know I'm going to save some of these scraps. I will use these in some other little project that just needs a little bit. Most of them I will toss, but I will keep the yellow and the pink. So there we go, our egg shape. This is what it's going to look like basically when it's finished. We're going to do a little bit extra, of course, because we need to have a back on it. If you were making a quilt, you would go ahead and sandwich it down like this. You would trim it out to be the same exact you know, trim your backing out like this and cut it out and then put binding on. This has got curves and we're not making a quilt. We don't need to have binding. And I really didn't want anything to interrupt with the actual colors of the egg. I didn't want to have a bit of binding on it or anything like that. So this is going to be a nice and simple way to do it. I want to have the right side of my backing up. If it has a top or bottom, you want to make sure that the top and the bottom match. Now I could cut out, I could trace this and cut it out a perfect egg on there. And then I could put pins around it and line it all the way up. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decide where I want it. Maybe I want to have more of the colors like that. 
but I want to have that purple egg down there. So I just want to make sure I have a good seam allowance. I'm going to give myself a good half inch all the way around it, but I'm going to be stitching along on the inside of the egg. So as long as I have a little bit around the edge, it'll be fine. As I mentioned, you could trace out the egg, but this way it's just a little bit easier. You have a little bit less to line up. So I just put a couple pins in here just to hold it all together. I'm gonna to take it over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna use this as my marker. So I'm gonna put this on the edge of my foot and I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch in. Again, if you wanna use a 3 8 if it's a little bit easier for you, sometimes it can be hard, as I mentioned, stitching so you're just a quarter of an inch consistently around from the edge. And if you have problems with that, wait for the next one and I'll show you a simple way to do it. But this is how I'm gonna do mine. And I'm just going to go ahead all the way around, but I want to leave a little bit of a gap. You're probably good inch and a half, two inches. It's not a really thick project, so you don't need a giant one. Now, we don't have any straight edges. Normally, I say leave your opening on a straight edge. We don't have any straight edges. So what I want to look at my project and say, okay, the simplest place for me to put my opening is not going to be down at this big, big curve or at this tight little curve. So I wanna leave it somewhere along here. And what I did with my other ones is I found that this section right here was a good area to go ahead and leave my opening. You can mark it with pins, you can mark it with your pen. So I'm just gonna leave a little bit of an opening here. Basically for me, it's gonna be in between my two quilting lines here where I did that top stitching and the actual quilt as you go. So I'm gonna start at one point I'm gonna back stitch a little bit and I'm gonna stitch all the way around and back stitch here. So let me show you how that looks like. I'll speed it up so it doesn't take very long. Now you can drop your stitch length down a little bit if you'd like, just to hold everything nicely together. So I'm gonna come a little bit past my mark so that I can back stitch, or you can start right at it, go forward a little and then back stitch. Then I'm just gonna sew around. I put my pins in a way that they're out of my way while I'm stitching. And then I'm just gonna spin it. I like to go ahead and just take the round pieces like this and stitch around them. But if you get to a tight curve and you find like you're struggling with it a little bit, lift up your presser foot and move your project as needed. These are pretty large, gentle curves so that I can easily spin it as I go. Just lining my presser foot up around the edge and letting it follow the edge of the egg. And when I come back around, I'm just gonna go slow. Here's my mark or your pin if you have a pin in place. And when I hit thereabouts, I'll just backstitch. Do you see how much easier that was while we didn't have the two pieces of egg cut out to the exact shape, I didn't have to worry about anything lining up perfectly. It didn't have to match or anything like that. Now I can just take my scissors and I can trim it away, or I can take my pinking shears. Because it's a curved shape, let me show you a little bit this way first. If I take and I just trim it around, say we're just gonna trim around with our scissors like this. When we turn it right side out, we wanna make sure that it can flex a little bit here. Sometimes when you're having a curve, it'll cause a little bit of a weird pucker when you turn it right side out. But if you're gonna cut it just with plain scissors all the way around, every half inch or so, you just wanna snip a little bit into your seam allowance there. You wanna stay a couple of threads away from your stitching line. You don't wanna cut through that stitching line. If you accidentally cut through the stitching line, you're gonna to have to go beyond it on the inside and stitch a new stitching line. It's a little bit harder when you're doing a curved egg like this, so you wanna just be careful. But if you have pinking shears or pinking rotary cutter, you wanna take a little bit of your batting of your egg, and then of course you're also gonna get your backing fabric. Again, staying away from your seam allowance. This could be a little bit harder on your hands because of the batting. And just go ahead around. And when I get to the opening, I'm right at a seam. When I get to the opening, I like to give a little bit extra of my backing fabric just to make it easier to tuck in when I turn it the regular side out. And that little bit's not gonna cause me an issue with a pucker.
these little pink edges, the little triangles that my scissors are cutting out, is going to allow these curves to, they're going to allow them to flex and breathe a little. It loosens up that seam so it's all not nice and super tight, which allows us to move on the curve. A project like this, it may not be super important. These curves are just a nice little bit, as I mentioned, those of an easy curve, but it's something good to get into practice of doing. This is super easy to turn right side out. Just go ahead and put your fingers if you need to. You can use hemostats, but I just go ahead and put my finger through, grab it with my thumb, and I can just gently poke my thumb out through that hole, just enough to grab it. You can work it down a little bit this way. You can pull it out a little bit. If you try to take big chunks out, it tends to get stuck, but you can take little bits out. This is why we backstitched the beginning and the end. Otherwise, our threads would have popped at that turning spot in the opening. Now you can use any type of a turning tool you have. I have this fun little flamingo. This is a little bit pointier than I like to use on a project like this. So I take a metal crochet hook that's got a rounded tip. That way when I put it in here, I can run it along the edge and I don't have to worry about it. I haven't used the Flamingo enough to wonder if it's going to pop through on a single piece of fabric. I do use it in other projects that are like double quilted. I just wanna get that round edge out and I want it to look like my egg. We don't wanna have any of these little inside little dimples there. Just roll my thumbs around the edge so that the egg is on the top and I don't want the backing to show. Depending on the color of your backing, it may matter or it may not. If you're using both, like if I were to use the front and back for the same fabric on this one, the one I used on the back, if it pops out just a little bit around the edge, it's not gonna be that noticeable. But this one is a little bit bright against some of the colors of fabric I chose for the top. Now when it comes to this point, we're just gonna tuck in those edges. And we wanna guesstimate on where that curve's gonna be. We want it to look natural. We don't want it to be sucked in at a weird spot there so you have this weird little cut into it. We wanna have it so that it's just nice and smooth. We know our top seam allowance from our quilted part is going to be narrower than our back, but I wanna make sure that my back has got that extra bit so it doesn't show. I have these heat resistant pins that are really great, something they have out on the market. You could put regular pins, you could put a clip, but I like to go ahead and give this a nice press so that I know that if I hit the pin, it's not gonna melt. I put one in the beginning, just kind of follow it around. Make sure it just looks like it's sitting in there nice and smooth and kind of give it a little bit of a tug gently like this. When I round it out, like pulling it both down, it tends to round that corner nicely. I could put another pin, tuck you in. That's where this guy will be helpful. Get back in there. We don't want any of those frayed edges sticking out. So we're gonna go and top stitch along here pretty similar to what we did on our quilted part. So we had a little practice there for what we're gonna do now. You can press it if you want, or you can skip this part. I just like to make sure that everything is nice. And I have that nice egg shape to it. I'm gonna press it from the top so that hopefully any of the extra will roll over to the back and not vice versa. Because if I went this way with this loose fabric, it could roll over to the front. This is quilted, ouch, pin. So it should do nice. If a little bit pops out, I'm not gonna be, you know, fretting about it and just having a heart attack or anything. Cause you could see a little bit of the yellow peeking down here. And sometimes that just happens, but I like to do my best to avoid it. But then if it happens, it happens. I'm not gonna worry about it. Give it a little steam if you like steam. You can spritz it with some water. See these pins here, they're made out of a heat resistant material. So I can just go ahead and press right onto that spot, not have to worry about it. I'm gonna peek at the back just to make sure it looks good. Everything is nice and flat. Now we're gonna top stitch it. I'm gonna go back up to a 2.8 on my stitch length. 
just because I've already stitched everything together so I know it's held secure, this is the only spot that I'm actually stitching closed. So the rest of it is more of a, just to hold it and keep it shaped because if it goes through the washer, sometimes they can get a little out of shape and stuff. So it's nice to put a top stitched egg around. It's nice to put a top stitch edge around your egg so that it holds its shape over time. I'm gonna start a little bit before, just to know, for me, it's so I know I've closed the hole. And I that way, when I go cruising around it, I can go as fast or as slow as I want. And I won't have to worry about missing it. This area I want to pay particular attention to. Stick with my eighth of an inch top stitching. I want to make sure that that is closed. Now, I like to bring my threads to the top so I don't have a bunch of... Uh, bird's nest at the bottom and that not only I would hold it with my left hand but you won't be able to see what I'm doing so I'm going to hold the thread from the top of my needle off to the side with a little bit of tension I'll put my needle down and when I bring my needle back up while still holding on to this thread it's going to bring the bobbin thread up so I can grab that so now I know I have both pieces of thread at the top they're not going to get all messed up and jumbled up in the back put my needle back down to hold it in place and there we go. So I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch slowly around, a couple stitches, and I can let go of this thread. So I'm going to, I don't stitch over my pins if I can avoid it. Sometimes accidents happen. So I'm going to pull these out as I go. I'm going to put it here because these guys are sharp and they roll all over the place. Making sure again that I'm staying about an eighth of an inch. I don't want to go, if I have a quarter inch seam allowance, I need to go an eighth of an inch on the top. If you did more of a half an inch seam allowance, you'll have more of your folded edge tucked in so you can go to a little bit wider if you wanna do more of a quarter inch. Top stitching tends to be an eighth of an inch from the edge. Once I get past that stripe, then I know that I've gone ahead and I've closed up the hole. I can reach back and trim my threads. And now slowly, quickly, whatever speed you want to go, I'm going to go around the edge. I'm going to stay around that eighth of an inch and just follow the shape. And I'm going to go slow when I get back to the beginning. And I'm going to try to stitch a couple stitches right over that same line. Back stitch to lock my thread. Trim my thread off the back. Here we are. You might need to hit it with a little bit of a lint roller. I gave it a nice little press with the steam of the iron again. So I have a nice flat back with no stitching and then I have the stitching on the front. So there you go. There's your quilt as you go. A little egg. Now I want to show you a simple version if we're just going to go ahead and do a top piece, our batting and our backing. Take the top piece over to your sewing machine and decide you can skip quilting this it's really a small project so it's not going to be that big of a deal and even as a mug rug you can skip the quilting part if you'd like if you don't quilt a quilt the batting can get bunched up as it gets washed if you look at the front of the package of your batting it'll tell you or check online how far apart or how close your quilting stitches need to be for mine they need to be 10 inches to get apart or together, you know, no more than 10 inches apart. So my project is less than 10 inches. I really don't have to quilt this. So I can easily just take my two pieces. But what I like to do is since this has got like a panel or a row look, I took my stitching, I don't know if you could see it, is I just put a line through this blue one, this blue one, and then this blue one up there. So it was three of them. It worked out really well. You can take a wavy stitch on my red ones, I did a wave stitch. So you can do a wavy stitch and just wave across it. You can quilt it however you want, or again, you can leave it unquilted. Small projects, if they're just sitting out on your table to look nice as a decoration or to hang on the wall or something like that, it's really not that big of a deal how much you quilt them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this over and give it a quick quilting, and then I'll show you how to put this one together. For most holidays, you can find fun row uh, some people call them panel quilts. Some people call them rows or row panels. Check out at the store and see what they have for the holidays, especially if you're doing spring or Easter. And this way I get a lot of fun things, a lot of different things. This is the same fabric that I just 
laid my egg down in a different place. So I've got my April showers. So I can use this for Easter. If I placed it differently, I can just use it for spring. The colors are great. So this one's got the eggs. So I have some flowers down here in the Easter baskets. So while yes, it's definitely meant for Easter, you can use it for springtime and keep it out a while longer. So I have this, I just ran my three lines of straight stitching. You can use fancy, you can go ahead and just hand stitch it really quick if you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my backing fabric right side up. And I'm going to take my panel or my egg or however I made this piece right here, and I'm gonna lay it right sides down. Now since this is full and I don't have to worry about having crooked edges anywhere, I don't wanna worry about how my stripes are going, I can just lay these two down and not worry about it. Again, right sides together. I put my backing down first because when I put it through the sewing machine and sew it, I'd rather have this going through than having the batting again. But this way I have a little bit more, it's a full piece, I don't have to worry. I can see all of this, so if anything moves, it'll be where I can see it. I'm going to take my stencil and I'm going to lay it down. If I was really particular and I wanted to make sure I had it in certain spaces, then that's the way we did it when we did this. But this one, I know I'm going to be fine either way. I just make sure that I lay this down straight. I can see my lines, I can peek and check. So I'm gonna put my egg down. When I cut it out, I kind of gave myself an idea of where I wanted it to be. So I just wanna make sure that there's a piece of my, like down here, I wanna make sure, because I have a little extra batting, so I can trim that extra batting off just so I can see my fabric. And I can trim a little bit off the top again, just so I can see where that piece of fabric is. See how I'll be able to see where the top of the fabric is there and I can easily see where the bottom is there. So I lay my egg down, adjust it. This works great if you just want to have a solid color egg, put two pieces of fabric down if there's no designs on it or anything, or this one's got the eggs on it, but it's not in a set way. You can put it any way you want. Then I will trace around my egg. Again, using whatever marking tool works for you. We all have our own things. We like what we like and we use it. I'll put a couple pins in just to make sure nothing shifts. Now this time I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew right on this line. I don't have to worry about being even and perfect and making sure that I'm always lined up. And you know, sometimes in the beginning when you're trying to figure those things out, you get a little wobbly and stuff. So I'm gonna make sure I leave myself an opening. So again, I will back stitch here. And then when I come back around, I'll back stitch there. But this time I'm gonna stitch right on the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my 2.0 stitch line just to hold everything together so I don't have any gapping when I turn it the right side out. You can go as fast or as slow as you want, but being able to follow right on that line is going to be perfect because then we're gonna cut out our seam allowance around it. I am a little bit tight down here at the bottom and the top of my egg, but it's still, I've got plenty of room. Back stitch, and then just follow my drawn line. Remove my pins. Okay, now, can you see I went a little off the line on the inside? Oh my, it's still got a nice little curve to it. Is anyone gonna know that I did that? Well, you guys are all gonna know because I showed you. But I want you to know that if you go off the line a little bit, either way, it's okay. If you went and sneezed and went way out here, cut your thread, come back here a little bit, stitches from before you sneezed, and then just go back and follow along the line. It all works out in the end. This, no one's gonna know People aren't gonna come up to your table and hold your eggs like this and go, oh, look, this one doesn't have the exact same curve as this one. Oh my goodness. I have, a, I have a little phrase I like to say, you know, 
if someone is going to get that close and looking at your project and they're going to go like that, they're not friends of yours and don't invite them back over because they don't deserve it. Other people are going to look at it and go, oh, look how nice that is. And if they do see a little wobble, they're going to go, you know what? Robin worked hard making these. She tried making something handmade. So maybe it was the first time she made it. Maybe she needs a little bit of practice. But let me tell you, to be honest, most people are not going to notice. Even another quilter or sewer, especially if you have them out on the table and you start putting food or something down, or you pick them up and move them, or they're just hanging on a wall, people aren't going to notice. They're going to look at it and see, and they're going to want to look at the sunshine and the jelly beans. They're going to be amazed that you put all those fabrics together, and wow, how did you get that so nice? They're not going to see the little imperfections that you and I see. I see them in my projects. You'll see them in your projects. Nobody else really does. Nobody knows what it started as. You're the one that created this. You can do the same thing with Easter bunnies. You can do them with the eggs of all different sizes. This is where I didn't sew. So I'm going to go ahead. Let me just. Let's cut it from this side so that we can easily see. I'm just going to go ahead and cut in with my scissors just so it's easier to cut with my pinking shears. So you see, I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of a seam allowance. Whatever seam allowance you do, you definitely want it to be at least an eighth of an inch. But if you will, just go ahead and trim it up a little more. If this spot's an eighth and the next one around the corner is a quarter inch, it's the seam allowance. It's going to be on the inside of your project. Nobody's gonna know. So I went out a little wider. I can just trim it down. I know each of us have our own threshold of perfection. And if it's something that's really important to you, maybe this style doesn't work. But I find that for someone who's just starting to sew, that doing curves especially, that laying them together and sewing right on the line is a lot easier for them than the way we did it when we had to put our presser foot up against the edge. Definitely don't want that much sticking out. So let me just go ahead and trim that down a little. Again, I'll find a use for those scraps, you know it. So you see how I have it sticking out a little bit? It just allows me to tuck it in. So that's another thing we can do here. Let me show you that little trick now that I'm thinking of it. We can put our egg back on here because this one we sewed right on the line. So if I put my egg back on here, since I'm on the other side that I don't have the drawn line on, I can go ahead and trace this line. See how I have that line, where are we? See how I have that line traced back around? So now I can fold this right along that line and just peek in there to see where that line is. And I can fold it. And if I crease it right now with my thumbnail, it's gonna give me, can you see the little line right there from our ink? It gives me that little bit of a curve. And I have the same thing on this side. I can just go ahead, you take it over and give it a good press, but that's gonna give me, so I just rub it really hard, that's gonna give me that little bit of my seam right there. So when I turn this right side out, Depending on your batting and how big you left your opening, I always leave it smaller than I should sometimes. There we go. I had too big of a chunk trying to come out at once. So if you just get a little small little corner, I know it's not a corner, it's a rounded egg, but if you get a small little bit, you can go ahead and pull it out. And we take our turning tool. So we put that little crease, you can see the little crease right here, a little bit different with the batting and stuff, but see how it just made it? We can just tuck it in just nice and then we can line it all up neatly, give it a good press and top stitch all the way around it again. Now sometimes after you do your top stitching, you might get a bit of a wavy thing like this. And it's probably the way I'm thinking is I made my my stitching a little bit too tight here. So I stuck with the 2.0. So maybe if I want my stitch length more back to the 2.8, I forgot to change it. 
it would stop this. But if I give it a good heat press and I steam it from both sides, then everything lays nice and flat. If yours doesn't lay flat, you could try spritzing it with water or use maybe some starch or something. And worst comes to worst, you can always just make a smaller egg. You'll have to cut this off. Go through the process again, make your eggs smaller and just lengthen your stitch length and you'll have learned the lesson like I have that if you want it to lay nice and flat, once you get it laying down and you start using it and everything, it'll come out fine. So here's a little array of mug rugs we've made today. I hope you enjoyed this video and take these as, you can make them just as I made them as mug rugs or you can jump off and make them into anything you want. I did use the smaller eggs, so I made it for my Easter bunting. You can make larger eggs and you could put it just as some type of a wall hanging, put them into, applique them onto bags, put them on buntings and banners, put them on table runners. You don't have to make them into mug rugs. You can take this idea and just applique onto something. You could put some minky on the back or put flannel on the back, use different battings, different fabrics, adjust the sizes. There's just so many things that you can do. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea on how to start and then you guys can jump off from here and create anything you'd like. So thank you for hanging out with me this week. I hope you enjoyed the egg mug rug project. And for those of you that made it all the way to the end, our little code word for this week will be red brick, because this reminds me of the bricks on the side of a house. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.